Hello students, uh, this video on antiemetics part 1 uh, provides complete comprehensive overview of uh, antiemetic drugs. Now look at this diagram. This diagram uh, shows mechanism of action of antiemetics. Now as we all know, uh, vomiting occurs due to the stimulation of vomiting center located in the medulla oblongata that is the brain stem. Now closely associated with the vomiting center is a chemoreceptor trigger zone located outside the blood brain barrier and this chemoreceptor trigger zone is easily stimulated by ametogenic substances like uh, chemicals, chemotherapeutic agents, uh, drugs like morphine and the joxin. Now main receptors that are located on chemoreceptor trigger zone are the dopamine D2 receptors, then 5-HT3 uh, receptors, neurokinin 1 receptors, cannabinoid that is a CB1 receptors and stimulation of these receptors by ametogenic substances stimulate chemoreceptor trigger zone. Ametogenic impulses are further transmitted to vomiting center and the vomiting is induced. Now chemoreceptor trigger zone is also stimulated by ametogenic impulses from the inner ear uh, that is the vestibule. Now vestibule generates ametogenic impulses due to motion sickness or travel sickness. Now these impulses are carried by vestibulocochlear nerve and these impulses stimulate muscarinic and histaminic H1 receptors on vestibular nuclei and thus these ametogenic impulses are further transmitted to chemoreceptor trigger zone and vomiting is induced. Now apart from this uh, vomiting center is also stimulated uh, by impulses from the GIT that is impulses from the gut. Now ametogenic substances like uh, radiations, uh, cytotoxic drugs, uh, gastrointestinal tract irritants stimulate antirochromaffin cells to release 5-hydroxy uh, tryptamine that is serotonin while uh, the sensory neurons uh, once they are stimulated because of ametogenic substances, they release substance P. Now 5-hydroxytryptamine that is 5-HT binds to 5-HT3 receptors on vagal afferents. While substance P binds to neurokinin 1 receptors on the vagal afferents. Now vagal afferents transmit ametogenic impulses to the vomiting center and vomiting is induced. Now let's see the mechanism of action of different category of antiemetics. Now first category of antiemetics are the anticholinergics, for example hyosin. Hyosin is also called as a scopolamine. Now hyosin competitively antagonize acetylcholine muscarinic receptors on vestibular nuclei and prevent the transmission of ametogenic impulses due to motion sickness to the chemoreceptor trigger trigger zone thereby preventing vomiting. Now hyosin has been used in the treatment and prevention of all kinds of motion sickness. Second category of drugs are the H1 antihistaminics for example cinarazine. Now these drugs antagonize histamine H1 receptors on vestibular nuclei and uh, they are found to be the first choice drugs in the treatment of motion sickness. Now a uh, third category of agents are the uh, neuroleptics uh, that is D2 antagonist for example uh, prochlorpyrazine. Now uh, these drugs block uh, D2 receptors located on chemoreceptor trigger zone. Now these neuroleptics are the broad spectrum antiemetic drugs and these are indicated in drug induced nausea and vomiting, post operative nausea and vomiting. But these are not the preferred choice due to extra pyramidal side effects and numerous uh, drug interactions exhibited by these drugs. Now fourth category of drugs are the prokinetic agents for example uh, metoclopramide. Now metoclopramide exerts antiemetic effect by antagonizing D2 receptors on chemoreceptor trigger zone. Now apart from the antiemetic effect, it also uh, speeds up gastric emptying and that means it also speeds up trans, uh, transportation of chyme from the stomach 
to the intestine by virtue of its uh, antagonistic effect on peripheral dopamine D2 receptors located in upper GIT and metoclopramide also stimulates 5-HT4 receptors. Its D2 receptor antagonistic effect and 5-hydroxytryptamine 4 agonistic action produces prokinetic effect and thus metoclopramide is useful in gastroparesis that is delayed gastric emptying and also in gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, even though metoclopramide is a broad spectrum antiemetic, it is not the first choice drug due to extra pyramidal side effects. Now, a fifth category of drugs uh, are the 5-HT3 receptor antagonists, for example, ondansteron. Ondansteron is safe and broad spectrum antiemetic. It is often used as a first-line therapy in the management of uh, nausea and vomiting. It blocks 5-HT3 receptors uh, located centrally on the chemoreceptor trigger zone and peripherally it blocks 5-HT3 receptors located uh, on the vagal afferents in the GIT. Now, a sixth category of drugs uh, are the NK1 receptor antagonist, for example, a propitant. Now, these drugs block NK1 receptors uh, located centrally on the chemoreceptor trigger zone and NK1 receptors uh, which are located peripherally on the vagal afferents in the GIT. Now, these drugs effectively prevent acute as well as delayed vomiting and are indicated in chemotherapy and post-operative nausea and vomiting. Now, a seventh category of drugs are the uh, cannabinoids, for example, uh, dronapinol. Now, these drugs are used as a second line prophylactic antiemetics in cancer chemotherapy. And these drugs activate cannabinoid CB1 receptors located centrally on chemoreceptor trigger zone and prevent vomiting. Uh, now, let's talk about uh, individual categories of uh, antiemetic agents. Now, first category of uh, antiemetics are anticholinergics, for example, hyosin. Now, as discussed, uh, these drugs block muscarinic receptors in the vestibular nuclei and they are indicated in the motion sickness. Now, complete pharmacology of uh, anticholinergics as uh, uh, antiemetics uh, can be obtained uh, from my video on antiemetics part 2. Now, a second category of antiemetics are antihistaminics, uh, for example, maclizine, cinarizine. Now, these drugs block H1 uh, receptors, H1 histaminic receptors in the vestibular nuclei. And these drugs are the first choice drugs uh, in the treatment of motion sickness. Now, complete pharmacology uh, of uh, H1 antihistaminics as antiemetics uh, can be obtained from my video on antiemetics part 3. Now, another category of antiemetics are the neuroleptics, for example, prochlorpyrazine. Now, these drugs block D2 receptors, that is dopamine D2 receptors located uh, in the chemoreceptor trigger zone. And these drugs are uh, useful in uh, uh, the management of uh, drug-induced nausea and vomiting. Uh, they are indicated in the post-operative nausea and vomiting, then post-radiation therapy also, that is a post-radiation therapy induced nausea and vomiting. Now, these drugs are not preferred uh, because of their extra pyramidal side effects. Now, complete information on neuroleptics as uh, antiemetics uh, is given in my video on antiemetics part 4. Now, next category of uh, antiemetic is the uh, prokinetic, for example, uh, metoclopramide. Now, metoclopramide exhibits dual action. Uh, it acts centrally and block uh, uh, dopamine D2 receptors which are located on chemoreceptor trigger zone. And uh, therefore, it is a very potent antiemetic. Uh, it's a very potent antiemetic agent. And peripherally, uh, metoclopramide acts on upper GIT. Uh, it's a dopamine D2 receptor antagonist peripherally and it is also a 5-HT4 agonist and uh, by virtue of its uh, peripheral action on upper GIT, uh, it 
hastens or it speeds up the process of uh, gastric emptying and therefore it is a prokinetic agent uh, it exhibits prokinetic effect and uh, it is a broad spectrum uh, antiemetic it is used in the prophylaxis and treatment of uh, nausea and vomiting due to post operative chemotherapy it is indicated in nausea and vomiting uh, that is induced by drugs uh, it is indicated in uh, disease associated nausea and vomiting and also uh, indicated in the management of uh, nausea and vomiting caused by the radiation sickness and uh, since it uh, uh, hastens gastric emptying since it uh, speeds up the process of gastric emptying it is uh, useful in gastroparesis for example diabetic gastroparesis and it is also effective in mild gastroesophageal reflux disease now for complete information uh, on the mechanism of action and pharmacology of uh, metoclopramide you can refer to my video on antiemetics part 5 now a next category of antiemetics are the 5 ht3 antagonists for example ondansteron now uh, these drugs block 5 ht3 receptors located centrally on chemoreceptor trigger zone and they also block 5-HT3 receptors located peripherally on the vagal afferents in the GIT. Now these drugs that is a 5-HT3 receptor antagonist, these are the first line drugs in the treatment of nausea and vomiting. Ondansteron effectively prevent acute emesis in uh, uh, cancer chemotherapy. Uh, it is very effective in uh, radiotherapy induced nausea and vomiting. Again, useful in post-operative nausea and vomiting and also effective in disease and drug-induced nausea and vomiting. Now, for complete pharmacology on 5-HT3 receptor antagonist as antiemetics, you can refer to my video on antiemetics part 6. Now, another category of uh, antiemetics are the NK1 receptor antagonists, for example, a prepitent. Now, uh, this, uh, these drugs, they block NK1 receptors located centrally on chemoreceptor trigger zone and they also block NK1 receptors located peripherally on the vagal afferents in the GIT. Now these drugs are effective in preventing acute as well as delayed vomiting and are indicated in chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting. Uh, they are also indicated in post-operative nausea and vomiting. Now for complete pharmacology of uh, NK1 receptor antagonists, you can refer to my video on antiemetics part 7. Another can category of uh, uh, antiemetics are the cannabinoids, for example, dronapinol. Now, delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol is the active principle here. Now, uh, this uh, active principle it activates CB1, uh, that is a cannabinoid 1 receptors located centrally on chemoreceptor trigger zone and uh, peripherally. Uh, these uh, uh, drugs, they stimulate CB1 receptors located on vagal afferents in the GIT. Now, these drugs are the second line prophylactic antiemetics in cancer chemotherapy. And the use is limited to the patients uh, not responding to other antiemetics. So, this is in brief on pharmacology of uh, antiemetics, a complete comprehensive overview. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Now, please note that the information in this video is exclusively for the students from their examination point of view. Now, consult a physician for the treatment of nausea and vomiting. Thanks for watching the video.